So what is beautiful down tempo and electronica you say? It is something like this. So we will divide this into two parts. In the first part, we are going to make the groove like this. And in the second part, we are going to look more closely to build up. So like this. So if you are interested in a soothing, beautiful track and learn how you can make it, hop in. First thing is the kick, sounds like this. It has a very aggressive thumb, but it will need it because we will have a lot of elements in the track for the ambience. And we will add an EQ to cut the low end. These are just unnecessary for the kick. And the second thing that we are going to do is the thumb. And we are going to use exactly the same sample for that. So I just take a kick like this. And the idea is making it shorter. Give a bit of attack so that we don't hear this initial thumb. And then we are going to cut all the lows and super highs. Sounds like this with the kick. So we have this very deep kick and tom going on. The next will be the rim snare. So this will be very simple. I have a rim snare sample sounding like this. And we are going to add a little bit EQ on top to cut super lows. And I'm really not interested in super highs neither. And get a bit focused sound. Here we go. And then we are going to introduce a bit of room reverb on top of this to send this. Just take a reverb here and then make it slightly longer, slightly smaller. And give it a bit spin on the mid part. Get a bit chorus on the slightly higher part. And let's try how it sounds. Let's send this. Yeah, much more room feeling together with the kick. So this is good enough. I think the, one of the most Christian Loeffler thing is having this huge clap sound. And the way I want to do is just adding a lot of organic clap sounds on top of each other so that we get this like a lot of people clapping at the same time feeling like he uses in his track. So I'm going to layer up the clap samples. Let's start introducing first one, the main hit. This is a clap sample from my, my sample pack. I will put it in the link below. It sounds like this. It's a very organic, very huge clap together with this kick and bass. But this is of course not enough. We have to add the organic claps before this clap sound as well. So let's introduce more. So the first hand clap is sounding like this. And it is right before the other claps in the grid. And the second one is sounding like this. It's literally hand clapping and it's much close earlier than the other one. So it's preparing this one is preparing the other one. This one gives like a pre-clap feel. And the final this one is just in between here to make this a bit of variation because otherwise this is just the same clap. This one sounds like this. So it gives more ambient feel. So all together. And during the track, we will variate the placement of the each clap. So each is slightly different so that it feels like we are really making it super organic. So if I zoom out, you can see that the placements are slightly off, slightly different from each other. So this will make it much more organic. So if I play one more time. And once we have done this, what I like to do is group them up and put a glue compressor so that we can just try to keep them more glued to each other. So I'm going to do a bit faster attack. And then finally, I will add a drum room. This will be a smaller room, so we won't have too much reverb. Let's get the reverb. The first thing, that important thing over here is actually putting the size really small and putting the stereo small as well. So it really feels like a small room. And then let the highs go because there are a lot of highs here. Like I will also send the shakers and so on here. So this important, take the spin off and put 100%, make the decay time much smaller. And we will just send some to there. If, I, if we solo this, you will hear it a bit better. 
if I saw this. So. Once we have done this, the other thing that we are going to do now is the shakers. These are really important as well. Uh, they are really organic. There are really a lot of things going at the shakers. So let's take care of that part now. So to start with, we had the same shaker sample, the original one sounding like this. Let me open this up. This is also from my sample pack. So quite organic sounding shaker sample. So what I did is take the same sample and copy it three times and take different pieces and transpose a bit. So here you see this, this transpose minus six and this one is transpose minus two also. And we cut a piece from each and these pieces are slightly different. So if I play them, they sound slightly different and at the same time they sound the same because the same sample and on top of that if we go take a look at here you see that the, the, this one is the original big one it plays like uh, every beginning of the bar and the half the bar and then we are filling up the rest with the other sample and if i play this now almost something somebody is like playing with the hands almost scratching the walls and so on and i play with the velocities as well so that we have this up and down feel that is not enough to make it even more organic. I added a slight vocoder. It's quite wet here and the important is bringing the depth a little bit so it's a bit darker. And then take this piece here. The idea is pushing it back because we will have more shakers. So now we are getting the darker side of these guys. So this will sit in the behind. And because they are sitting in the behind, we can even pan it slightly together with the track. Now we got this one, we have we had to bring this uh, front hats on top of this. So let's do that. So the first thing that we have on the hi-hat side is this bright hat, I will, I will say, this is the transient, sounds like this. Right, and we are randomly panning right and left. It's not too much, but it's still there. A slight EQing and bright, making brighter. And then the contrasting this one, we have a slightly lower side, a little bit shakerish part of the same sound. It just makes it like uh, a bit more coherent. And then finally on top of that, I have this shaker loop. This is really on the bright side of the things to cheer up the things because we have this low shaker loop over here. So each one of them has a different frequency range, so we don't need to try too hard with the EQing because now they are sitting in different places. And together with the drums now. This is really, really nice organic groove uh, going on. And of course that is not enough, then we have to add some percussions on top of this. So the first one is just a noise really. I make it slightly darker here and the, I take the same noise and make it also a bit uh, even darker here. So basically transpose it really hard. And then I had this snare sound and pan it slightly to the left. And it's right before the end of the bar so it gives this kind of dynamic feeling to the track. So it's all together now. Of course, we have to send these guys a bit to the room and so on, but we can do it quickly. And the final piece, there is the ambient noises. There's always ambient noise in Christian uh, Lovely tracks. It's either made from the effects or it's just there as a loop. So I'm going to just use a loop here from my sample pack again. You can really use anything. You don't need to use my sample pack. The first one sounds like this. it almost feels like it's raining outside and the second one is just simple noise and together they create this really nice ambient sound all together now one more time the one thing that we forget to do is actually the bpm we are going to go down a little bit here it should be around 115 to 20 so So we, just, we created this organic group, now we need to fill the rest and make it a bit more like a emotional, a bit more 
vibey. And the most, the most, the most important thing is the piano and the piano chords. Let's start with that. And the first thing that we should take a look at is the piano chords. Uh, I'm saying chords, but these are more or less the duo, duo notes. So if I do it like this, you will see a bit closer. They're really simple notes, just separated a bit to give a bit more separation between the notes and making the piano a bit like a steeper than it really is. You can use any piano VST that you would like to use, but I, in this case, what I like to do for this type of warm sound, take the Ableton Simples, Simples piano. This is one single sample, really, and sounds like this if you just play it. What you should do to start with is just bring down the velocities. Um, and this will also, this will decrease the... It will make the sound much darker. What you should do afterwards is just bring this beginning part. So we don't want this super transient. We want this smooth and deep piano sound. So we're going to move here a bit. immediately much smoother sound so what we are going to do of course bring an eq to make it a bit like a less boomy or like a muddy here cut those off and cut super highs as well boost a bit here beautiful and then we are gonna get a glue to make this even smoother much a bit less and then what you need to do is creating this a bit bigger room reverb or whole reverb actually and then sending it there so what I'm going to do take this off let's start from the scratch so that you can understand what we are doing let's solo this send it off to the hole make it under percent longer spin it a bit here let's EQ it a bit more here together with the piano itself It is just beautiful ambience, really, really nice. And if you try to listen with the, the rest now, you see that how the ambience changed immediately. Chaosmos does this a lot as well, so it's immediately this Chaosmos Loeffler ambience right ahead if you get this piano right. Um, the second thing that I see that he is doing, or I see a lot in the genre, is actually you take the same piano sample, uh, but in this case I'm going to put it here, like this, and what you can do is reverse the sample. So we are playing back to the behind, and we will make this longer now, so it will sustain, like this. Let's solo this. Maybe somewhere around here, so we can hear. Open this up. Volume up. We can volume up here as well. And I'm going to put uh, overdrive. Let's decrease the race a bit. The other thing that you can do actually is convert it to the sampler. This is good, you can make it even longer maybe if you don't want to get this oink sound. Like that. What I also like to do is, let's convert it to sampler. 
And then there's this mod, so it goes back afterwards. If I add crossbow. Much smoother now. It's just so beautiful. And what we are going to do with <coughs> the compressor to side chain the kick so that we can feel the groove in this one because this is a continuous sound. And together with the track now. You can see that I really decrease it down because I want to mix it properly. I don't want this sound to be in the front, it is just in the behind, just filling up the space. Nice. What is the next? The next one is, and the next one is very fun sound as well and very utilized sound in this genre as well. And it is the plug sound that is made in combination between a string and a piano. And again, I will use all Ableton stuff here. Let me do it together with you. So the notes, if you take a look, again, the simplicity continues. We are playing with the F, F the octaves of the F and then we are keeping the F but we are putting F sharp so that it creates a really nice uh, drama and then in that we are just doing this like this. This is the same that he used in his track but the most important thing I want to point out here is the first one the piano sample here it is the same let me take off all the or let's keep it otherwise the volume will be too low I think or let me try and if you put the EQ a bit uh, compression and side chain the kick let's take the side chain off for now this is nice but you can definitely see something is missing on the high end and rather than using a pin on the high hand which is very clicky you take a something like a guitar or something like a string and in this case I'm using the Ableton's own electric guitar um, without this EQ here sounds like And I'm just interested in this high part of the sound and together with the uh, piano. It almost makes like this kind of an Eastern instrument together. And of course we should be sending this a bit to the ambience. And a little bit to the echo as well. And make it a faster one this one. 16 should be better and make it a maybe ping pong. We slightly hear it but not there really. And together with the track one more time. Immediately we are getting there, really really nice. And the final thing probably here is adding this like really warm pads in the behind just to fill up the space, give it a bit more warm warmth, I will say. Let's do it together and just a simple wavetable. I'm gonna use this, I use this one, so if we take a look. This is just a chord progression that we are using the piano, but I slightly put the same note uh, an octave above so it will be richer. The idea here is basically getting any wave, doesn't really matter, and moving the waves around like this and closing the uh, cutoff filter and then uh, another EQ to just cut super high still and focus on the area that we're interested in, in this case here the warmth in a track and side chain the kick and together with the track
it is really the heart of the track. And the other things that is in interesting that we are coming now is that all using the effects and automation to build up your brick and build up the ambience. And let's do that. Let me change this file to the full project so that we can take a look how those part is done. So the first thing that we should be looking at is using the strings to create this drama. And if you take a look at the note here, this is the C sharp and she. So it's going like C sharp is um, it is the third note, and then we are going into second. So we are we are in the A sharp minor. It is the third. It's a bit more stable note and unstable note. So it will create this very kind of unstable feeling. Just let me play first before I show you the, uh, the sound. It just creates this, uh, like you don't want to stay there, but I cut it there. So you stay there, it creates this really weird um, feeling. And in this case, I'm just using the synthetic pad preset from the wave table. This is basically a wave table. Okay. I think I played it a bit around, to be honest. And it's just a soft suit uh, with a lot of voices in it. So it creates this really big ambience. And the thing over here is the arpeggiator is playing it super fast. So it's actually like da -da 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 sound. But because it's a long sound, it, you don't really hear it. And this is something that post rack uses a lot. Like you take the guitar string and do it so fast and use a lot of reverb, it almost sounds like a long string. The same idea applies here. And I think the most important thing over here, what I did, let me show you the notes and see, you can see that how it doesn't make any sense at all. This is me taking the push and playing literally randomly. Of course, it's in the key, but I'm still playing quite randomly here the idea is creating this ambient so if i play here you can hear how it sound so i'm using the same technique the arpeggio there is on so it's very arpe arpeggioing very fast so i take the reverb so that you can hear a bit more You barely hear that arpeggiation. And this really creates nice ambience on the background. Um, this kind of post rock feel here. So if I play here with the full track, you can hear a bit, get a bit more idea. Maybe we can play it a bit here so you can hear a bit more. It's this kind of ethereal vibe, a little bit like a. I will, I will say this is like something really used in post, post track, and probably in the original track he did it with the guitar as well. So I didn't want to use guitar uh, for that. And the other thing is that how everything slowly builds up. Like I'm not using all the shakers, like bringing a small piece after piece to create the ambience. And then we have this ambient sound, and this is basically me taking a wave table around triangle and square, a uh, triangle and sine wave here. You can see it's another sine wave. The idea again, moving this a lot with those later position. If I play it, and a bit phaser, so the this gets this weird phaser sound, and take this piece. This is basically creating this kind of people almost like a woving on the background vibe here. And if I play here. Like, it's really, really important. You realize it when you take it off. Take the, see the difference. It's so important, so little and so important. And if I use to show the notes, it's just playing the F and the A sharp, basically. Um, this is the, if you, we are in the A minor, if you count it, this is the fifth, A, one, two, three, four, five. And it's all the way until the end of the break. And I think that's it, really. Uh, what we are going to do now, I'm going to do a start to end play. And then, of course, I'm going to go one by one and try to show as much as I can with all these different uh, automations and so on. So let's take a look.
And yeah, that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you next one. Goodbye.